Hey YouTube, what you know good? He is the Reverend, this is Project KNM, and we are back with some more of that fresh art goodness. So, what in the world are we working on today? Well, this is day five of 2020's OC-tober, and this illustration is definitely one of the favorite ones I, I was working on during that month. As I stated in episode two of OC Tober, when I drew Clarence, um, a friend of mine and I, an old high school friend of mine and I, uh, we would occasionally work on CAWs because we are fans of pro wrestling and we are gamers, and we would come up with these just 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 these random ideas and character ideas and we would put them into what was not really a pro wrestling league of ours but a fight league the reason why I call it a fight league is because we set it up so that when these characters are you know having their matches if we like set them on CPU versus CPU uh, certain aspects will be eliminated you know, certain rules will be set up the idea is that submission and knockout are the ways to win rather than, you know, pinfall. To make it less of a pro wrestling match and more of a fighting uh, bout. And we came up with just, we, we, sometimes we come up with some weird freaking characters and this is one of the favorite ones that I made. I should totally redesign it if I do start picking up the more recent pro wrestling games. It's just that a lot of the 2K games are very limited and limiting. They don't even do freaking entrance animations right anymore. But I digress. This character, um, is his birth name is never actually revealed, but he, he goes by the title Daimao Masker. The Masker is a is an unknown warrior. We don't even know how long he's been alive. Uh, he may have been around for hundreds of years. He may be a relatively fresh face up and coming just young adult um who knows uh, the origins of the man behind the mask are obviously shrouded in mystery what matters is the mask itself it's known as the ever-changing mask and it's mainly because the mask is constantly getting updated and upgraded it maintains at least some semblance of the original form but the colors and the fabrics on top of it tend to change a bit but you can still somewhat tell it's the same mask kind of like how certain pro wrestlers luchadors and whatnot um have their masks and they have different colors and versions of the mask but you can still tell it's the same type of mask that's the idea when it comes to a diamond masker except instead of wearing different masks with similar design but different colors it's the exact same mask it's just changing it up every now and again and the reason why it changes up is because every opponent the masker defeats, they take a piece of their clothing or some of the hair or some of their attire, and that becomes a part of the mask. And it's also a sign that with each new victory, with each new change, the mask gets more powerful. And the reason why it gets powerful is because it's no ordinary mask, obviously. The ever-changing mask is what and I'm, I'm hoping I'm pronouncing this properly, uh, but with it, it's a, it's actually a, uh, a Japanese style yokai slash monster thing. Uh, you know, uh, you basically a, a creature of Japanese folklore known as a, uh, I want to say a chigumo. I think that's how you pronounce it, chigumo. I might have to look this up later to make sure I'm pronouncing this properly. But the idea was that um, if certain items, like a set of armor or an umbrella, or in this case a mask, is left untouched and unused for at least a hundred years, either like a wicked spirit will enter it and possess it, or the item um, becomes sentient in and of itself and has the ability to possess others. This is essentially the idea of what happened uh, to this mask. It's similar to what happened to another character that I've actually drawn uh, a while ago. Um, 
Bisham, uh, the Darkstalkers character Bishamon. Uh, he was possessed by a, a demon armor known as Hanya. And it essentially took control of him and had, and they formed a, I wouldn't say a symbiotic bond, but a more of a parasitic bond. Maybe symbiotic. <laughs> uh, where they would, you know, work together to kill people and feed the feed souls to the armor and feed blood to the sword. The idea was that the man behind the armor, Bishamon, had to be able to overcome this. And if I recall correctly, he does eventually overcome the power of that armor, is able to seal it away after getting it removed off of him, and he, he and his wife become monks. It's just that unfortunately, by the time of the third game, the armor had become so powerful that it was able to either escape or, thanks to the uh, the vampire savior himself, uh, Jada Doma, uh, opening that alternate realm, the armor was able to get in through there. But either way, that armor became too powerful and actually assumed the form of Bishamon again because he just liked that form. Um, but I digress back to the Daimao Masker. The Masker itself is no longer really in control of himself. The Mask itself, who hasn't actually been named yet, I don't know if we're ever going to give the ever-changing Mask an actual name, but the Mask is essentially the one doing the fighting now. I mean, it's kind of like a case of fighting for control of the body. And um, the idea for this is a case of you know the more these guys fight the stronger both get the stronger the, the, the man behind the mask gets uh, the stronger the mask itself will get the question is will, which one will assume total dominance eventually one is going to take over the other or at least overcome the other the man behind the mask will have to become strong enough of mind and body to overcome the control of the mask, realize that he doesn't need it, and freaking rip that bitch off. Or, the mask itself will become far too powerful and essentially the man will no longer exist as nothing more than a puppet to the will of this mask who essentially assumes the entire form. Like, the man will cease to exist and there will be nothing more than the mask who now has his own body. And I think about it, that was almost kind of like what happened in the, those Goosebumps stories, like the Haunted Mask. You guys ever read that? Yeah, but this is this is one of the, uh, my favorite designs, because one, the, the mask can change up every now and again. Different colors, different, you know, themes, but as long as you get the basic idea that this is the same mask, that's all that really matters. And it just, too, it's like, I always just thought we had a really good idea. This could have been like a, this guy could have been like an actual, like, standalone story in and of himself, even if it's just a short story. But in our, um, in our fight league, he has had quite a few rivalries, and he, if I do recall correctly, he has definitely, uh, won one of the two major championships so far it like during like the early years of that league during the like the like the like during like the very start of that particular that, that particular fight organization i'm pretty sure he was like one of the first champions and he's still quite the formidable opponent going on but he hasn't really won anything recently though he he tends to be one of those guys who almost always has like an interesting interesting and entertaining fight mainly because the guy is just absolutely vicious thanks to that mask but I am not but it's only a matter of time so we're gonna have to figure out what's gonna happen to him what's going to what what, what he's going to go through like I don't even know what this guy's gonna look like if we ever unmask him if we ever can find a way to get that mask off him I don't even know what he's gonna look like 
And I don't even know if we're going to get the mask off. But if we do, I think we should totally do what we did with B, with uh, what Capcom did with B. Shimon. I can see the man behind the mask continuing to be a fighter in that organization only for the mask itself to assume another name and still fight, having become so powerful that he maintains this very form. That ooh. That ooh. That would be a really good idea. Oh, man. But, you, know, pro, you know, being a fan of pro wrestling for ever since I was like five, I've always been interested in like weird like character arcs when it comes to these organizations. But um, yeah. Um, anyway, let, let me know if you, what you guys think about you know uh, the idea of the Diamond Masker. You might think it's a stupid idea. I think it's cool. Um, it's a little, it's a little campy. It's a little, it's done, but it's been done before, just not in pro wrestling. If I, if, at least not very often, if ever. But um, furthermore, uh, I'd like to know what you guys think of, you know, if there's any like pro wrestling arcs out there that you think this could fit, or any ideas uh, that you're coming up with that remind. Does this, does this remind you of anything that you've done in the past? Does this remind you of anything that you're working on? Let's just, you know, and I'm just trying to start a conversation uh, in the comment section. Like, um, so I guess the real question is, uh, honestly, I don't, I don't really have a, an actual question when it comes to this. I, I could sworn I wrote down what I wanted to say. You know, screw it. I'm just gonna go ahead and, uh, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna go ahead and improv this. When it comes to if this is a question for all the uh, the pro wrestling fans, what is your favorite character arc when it comes to like pro wrestling? Like, they, like take a particular pro wrestler out there and think about one of the things they've gone through. What is your favorite one uh, thing they've gone through? Like story wise, like was it a character change? Was it a a feud? Was it uh, introspection? Was it like a, a sudden shift? Was it a betrayal? Man, just I mean, I'm just I'm just always been a fan of pro wrestling with not only the fighting but also the storylines. So um, you know, just I guess that's just I just kind of want to know what you guys uh, what's your favorite kind of stories, storylines, and ideas when it comes to characters because. That's, that's really one of the big things that keep pro wrestling interesting is the stories and the characters. Um, and th that's one of the big reasons why my friend and I make this uh, CAW League. Uh, because we can just cr flex our creative muscles and come up with some interesting ideas, even if they sometimes are really, really stupid. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I guess that's my question for you guys. And with that, I'm going to go ahead and just wrap this up before I start rambling like an idiot again. As always, thank you guys for watching. Y'all take it easy. Memento mori. And I'll catch you all in the next one. Kill the feed.